Welcome back, everyone. Next, we have Servo Med Inc. It trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol CRVO and is a clinical stage biotech company focused on developing treatments for degenerative diseases of the brain. Today, we'll be speaking with CEO John Alam. Dr. John Alam is the chief executive officer and was co-founding member of this company. He previously headed all R&D against age-related neurological disorders at Sanofi, a top 10 global pharmaceutical company. Prior to Sanofi, he was chief medical officer and executive vice president, medicines development at Vertex Pharmaceuticals. And Dr. Alam started his industry career as director of medical research at Biogen, where he was instrumental in developing their first drug for multiple sclerosis, Avonex. Happy to welcome you to the Emerging Growth Conference today, doctor. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us. Wonderful. Well, the floor is yours, and call me back when you're ready for questions. Okay, very good. Um, again, thank you, Anna, and uh, welcome, everyone. I'm uh, Thank you for joining us on, on, uh, today, uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you uh, about ServoMed and introduce you to the company and to the great things we're doing. So this presentation does contain forward-looking statements, and I would just point you to our various filings with the SEC for a more extensive discussion of the opportunities as well as risks in our business. Uh, ServoMed is a CNS, Central Nervous System Therapies Directed Companies. Uh, we're targeting the early stages of the disease process in various age-related neuro neurologic disorders. It is the reason why we named ourselves ServoMed, um, which is after the French word for the brain or mind, Servo, or C, uh, spelled C-R-V-E-A-U. Um, our current focus is on dementia with Lewy bodies, which is the third most common chronic neurologic disorder of, of the brain. Um, after Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, it's a high unmet medical need as well as significant commercial opportunity. We are positioned to be first to the market uh, treatment for dementia with Lewy bodies, uh, being the only company with positive phase 2A data, uh, clinical data, as well as uh, the only, only company that's in, phase two, in late stage clinical development with a phase 2B clinical study that's ongoing. Um, I'll talk to you more about both our clinical data as well as the clinical study in, through the presentation, but I will just say at a high level, this is um, the primary investment thesis in the near term within this year is progress on this study, as well as um, the, the data readout, which will come by the end of the year and um, is positioned to be uh, the, a, a major value creator uh, within the company. So a little bit of background on the company. We are uh, were formed out of a reverse merger between a private company, EIP Pharma, which I had launched a few years ago and had been the CEO with a public pharma uh, company, Diffusion Pharmaceuticals. And our focus is on developing an oral drug for CNS disorders, uh, nephilimapimote, which was originally licensed from my former employer, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, in 2014, and, and the company was formed, EIP Pharma was formed around that, this drug. Um, one comment on the leadership and board of directors team uh, across the company, um, highly experienced uh, in the industry in terms of drug development uh, and taking drugs through to the market, as well as extensive experience in communicating with and engaging the, the biotech uh, investment community. So our drug is nephilimapimode, which is an oral drug um, targeting a very specific uh, intracellular protein kinase that's involved in cellular responses um, and plays a key role in a variety of different processes in neurologic disorders. There's extensive uh, both animal and clinical data around this drug uh, it was originally developed uh, start in, at, at Vertex Pharmaceuticals, but again, was taken over by EIP Pharma 
and all the clinical work in central nervous system disorders, including multiple studies in Alzheimer's disease and the more recent focus on dementia with Lewy bodies where we have positive clinical data and are progressing the drug um, through um, by, by, by EIP Pharma. So dementia with Lewy bodies, as I said, is a, a major neurologic disorder and disease. Um, 700,000 individuals in the U.S. are impacted by the disease. It is a dementia, but very distinct from Alzheimer's disease, uh, particularly in the beginning. It's not a memory disorder, but rather affects uh, attention and something, a cognitive uh, function called executive function, which is judgment, reasoning, uh, problem solving. Um, it has along with the dementia component, the cognitive component, it inherently often does, and in most patients impacts motor function as well. And this co combination of having cognitive impairment as well as motor impairment means that it has significant impact on quality of life, caregiver burden, um, dependency uh, over the longer term, all of which are actually, particularly in the early stages, have more impact on the patient, uh, as well as caregivers, than, the, the, does than does Alzheimer's disease. That medical need combined with the fact that it is a specialist-driven specialty disease in that it's primarily diagnosed and managed for by neurologists um, uh, and means that that combination, uh, along with the fact that there are no approved therapies, means that it is a significant commercial opportunity uh, and nephilim because of the type of impact we are having uh, and we hope to be able to demonstrate convincingly in the phase 2B study um, positions us very well and that there's a tremendous uh, commercial uh, opportunity for, 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 for the company. Now, while it is a terrible disease and has this impact and actually progresses faster than Alzheimer's disease, there are many aspects of the disease that actually make it more treatable and more apprehensible to develop a, 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 a disease-modifying drug um, than with Alzheimer's disease. In particular, in the early and through much of the disease course, there is actually much less um, uh, uh, neuronal loss and, and neurodegeneration than in, in Alzheimer's disease. In fact, in the early stages, this is less of a, in, in many, many respects, it's not a neurodegenerative disease. Rather, it is a disease of dysfunction and functional loss of synapses. Um, that's called synaptic dysfunction. And what that allows for is not only a, if you have the right drug and acting on the underlying disease process, not only slowing future decline, but has the opportunity to show a symptomatic improvement or a near-term actual improvement uh, for the patient. Uh, from a clinical development standpoint, this is huge because what that means is that you can show clinical effects in a phase two study in the, in the second stage of clinical development and de-risk in a phase three, which is incredibly difficult, as many of you know, to do in the chronic uh, neurodegenerative disorders like, like Alzheimer's disease. Um, perhaps equally importantly, what that allows for is to go to the market with a six-month clinical study uh, rather than um, a, a, a longer-term study and the tendon risk associ associated with that. And you can think of this in the same way as anti-TNF therapies in in rheumatoid arthritis, which have a profound symptomatic effect, reducing of swelling and pain in joints, in the longer term has this disease progression effect in terms of bone disease, but its use and its ability to get approved and move through clinical development in, in a very efficient path is based on a, that, that symptomatic effect. This effect in terms of um, improving and not just slowing decline is particularly true in the early stages and the half of patients who have pure dementia with Lewy bodies 
and don't have features of Alzheimer's disease on top of it. As a disease progresses, they develop this, these features and along with a fixed deficit. In the earlier stages, again, you have this ability of to reverse and improve, which leads to the ability to be able to go to the market with a six month phase three trial. Um, we've published extensively around our drug uh, with both animal data, which showed this reversal of the neurodegenerative process in preclinical data, as well as in, with clinical data in a 91 patient, uh, 16 week double blind placebo controlled study, which showed effects on dementia severity measured by CD, something, a measurement called CDR summer boxes, as well as motor function and walking ability um, as measured by a test called the timed up and go test at TUG. Uh, we also saw uh, effects on multiple effects on cognitive tests at, uh, at the higher of two doses valued in the study. And all of this was published in a, in a major journal, uh, Nature Communications in uh, September of, 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 of uh, 2022. Um, just to show you one piece of data, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but if you look on the right-hand side, in terms of attention on the lower is in light blue is the placebo group where you see um, slowing of pro uh, 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 progression, slight decline, but with the treatment in dark blue and the top, there's again this improvement, which leads to a, a wide difference between the drug of the nephlamapimod treatment and uh, placebo, and it makes the point that if you only slow decline, it would be really hard to show a difference because it would be on top of this, the, the light blue line on the top. So this is again, the, the, a fundamental difference in terms of what our drug is doing in this uh, population in, 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 in dementia with Lewy bodies. Now we've also published a second paper from the clinical study uh, which was published uh, this past fall in the major clinical neurology journal called Neurology, where we use the blood test to then distinguish patients who have pure dementia with Lewy bodies, this early stage population with ability to improve and reverse and, and uh, segregated them away with using that blood test, the patients who have uh, DLB with features of Alzheimer's disease, more advanced disease, and fixed deficit. And then when we reanalyzed then our phase, that clinical data, uh, sec di differentiating pure dementia with Lewy bodies with those with more advanced disease, you can see on the right-hand side in the light green, the magnitude of treatment effect um, as measured by a statistical number called Cohen's D effect size compared to in dark blue, the number uh, in the patients and the overall study population. And what we see is a rough doubling of the magnitude of treatment effect when you focus in that early dementia with Lewy bodies population, the pure DLB population, um, and goes to the point that that group is fundamentally more treat treatable if you have the right drug that's acting on the mechanism that's relevant uh, for dementia with Lewy bodies. And these are really actually quite striking and remarkable uh, results that led us to then saying in, in at least in the next study and then going through to the initial approval, we would focus on this pure DLB population. So we also in that phase 2A study, again, I don't have time to go into detail, but we do have objective data uh, on biomarkers in this study, which shows effects on the EEG, um, as well as on, on, a, on a plasma, a blood marker of disease activity, uh, further supporting that there is a direct effect and an effect on the underlying disease process in, 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 in this disease out of that phase 2A study. Um, overall, we learned a lot uh, from the phase 2A study that we believe fundamentally de-risks um, our upcoming clinical development all the way through to the market. We identify the optimal dose. We identify the best way to measure uh, drug effects and that's using a measurement called the CDR sum of boxes, which has been by 
by the FDA and regulatory authorities accepted as an approval endpoint in Alzheimer's disease. And then this focus on this early stage population, this pure dementia with Lewy bodies population. With that, we've designed a study that has, um, uh, that is now, that started in this past August is actively enrolling patients. We'll enroll patients by the, by the, in, in, within the first half of this year and we'll read out by the end of the year. This is a replication on one level of the phase 2A study. It's a 16 week placebo controlled study. We do have a 32 week open label extension uh, in order to help with enrollment. Uh, but again, with the optimization that we, from the various learnings, we have very high statistical power to see a, um, a, 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 a treatment effect and, and successfully demonstrate that the drug works uh, in this phase 2B trial. Importantly, at the end of this study, uh, we will have substantively and significantly de-risked the phase three trial, um, which in this, with the type of effect we're seeing, would be a six month phase three trial uh, with approximately 300 patients, but of, again, with six month duration rather than 16 week duration, it's primarily a replication, not that much risk ahead, and the cost of such a trial is 50 to 75 million rather than the many hundreds of millions of dollars that I think many of are used to in, in, the, in the Alzheimer's disease context. It's because of this de-risking that um, we will have, we believe we will have created significant value in the asset, in the company uh, with, po with a positive clinical data readout, which is, as I have said, um, is sketch is uh, is planned for by the end of the year. This is our primary focus within this year. Enrolling this study within the first half, reading the data out by the by the end of the year. Um, and then one slide just on the on the financial overview. What's really important is that we have we are financed um, have the cash to through to the end of the year by which time we will have the data readout in this phase 2B study. So, you know, to conclude, we are a long ways in. We've made significant progress in developing a very major, important drug for a major disease with high met unmedical need, uh, dementia with Lewy bodies. Um, we're well into the path towards delivering on a transformative drug that's going to have a lot of impact on patients and their caregivers. And I am asking you here today to join us in that journey um, um, in, in progressing nephilimathy mode for dementia with Lewy bodies. And I'll stop there and I'll ask Anna to, to join the call. Thank you, doctor. Yes, we do have some questions. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit more about the reverse merger. Why was that chosen? So our, our company, our management, and our, um, uh, our shareholder, what was most important going into this year was to finance out this next study. We had this clinical data. Um, it's all going in the right direction. It looks like we have a drug that's going to make a difference for patients with dementia, with Lewy bodies. But we need to do this larger confirmatory study um, to establish definitively that the, that the drug works. We had a grant from the National Institutes of Health um, that actually finances the clinical study itself. So we didn't need that much more additional money to run the company out through to the end of this year. Um, the type of money that you would raise, for example, in a public offering. So this was a path towards getting, um, minimizing the dilution to our shareholders in order to progress the, 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 the company through to the data, data readout in the phase 2B study. I will say that what we, and it was also along with uh, less dilution, we got it done. We had it financed. Um, but in doing that, what we did was we, in, to be more efficient, we sidestepped the type of discussion you would have into the public markets um, for, towards an IPO, which takes time can take six months, nine months, 12 months to establish yourself. That's what we're backfilling today 
in um, talking to the broader public markets and the investment community. And I'll just say to the audience today, the opportunity to you with the valuation that we have in, in the company today is to come in ahead of that as there is more recognition of what we've accomplished what, and, and the value that we can create um, in, in, through success in the, in the phase 2B study. Thank you for that. So with that said, why is now a good time to invest in ServoMed? I think it's related very much to that. It is the, it, so it starts with that the clinical data that we have and the science that we have. Uh, um, we have published extensively in the prior year. It's in major journals, peer reviewed, the data is out there. Um, and it, within the, the, the neurology community, I think people are, uh, except, you know, are in agreement that there is a, uh, this drug has shown data, it has tremendous potential, and there is a, we are positioned for success in this phase 2B trial. And as I have talked about, because of that, it will, it should substantially de-risk phase 3, at the end of this study, if it's successful, there will be a huge amount of value creation. And, and it's to buy into that upside and the value that we will create, we believe, within this year, um, that is the reason to buy into our company. And then today is in the near term, it's again to come be ahead of where there is uh, broader recognition into the, the, the public marketplace as more of the information and understanding of ServoMed as a public company. Um, we, as we are in, in, in investor meetings and then in investor conference, it's a more broadly disseminate uh, the, the, the narrative. And so given the significant commercial opportunity in DLB and with you as a leader in DLB drug development, is there a disconnect in the market in terms of how, how you're being valued right now? Absolutely. And, and I think that's a, that's a key message. And that comes from, um, you know, it is a, and, and it comes to part of the reason, again, for the reverse merger and why it was important for us to be in the public markets um, it's the place in, in where um, you can, it, the, the public market pulpit is the way to get out the, the story. Um, and, but saying that, it there still takes a little bit of time. Um, but staying, if we were, had stayed private, it would be that much more difficult. Um, but it's, it, there's a catch up here. Um, that we believe that through the year, um, even within the first half of the year, there um, we're certainly hoping that uh, we're going to close that gap in 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 that uh, disconnect. Again, to the people in the audience today, the opportunity to invest today is to be ahead of uh, when that gap is closed. And a follow-up, a question from one of our viewers, specifically you, Doctor. Why? You, with your notable background, why have you chosen to work in this space with this company? This is a great question. Thank you. Um, you know, through my career, I've worked in you know, significant neuro, uh, 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 diseases, and I've been fortunate to be in, be in companies and work on drugs that have made difference for patients. So this was multiple sclerosis at Biogen uh, with their first drug, Avonex, in the 1990s. You know, at Vertex, worked on, you know, on a drug that uh, one of the early protease inhibitors for HIV worked on hepatitis C um, on the first, one of the first drugs that uh, of the oral, the new mechanisms that have now effectively cured hepatitis C on working on one of the first drugs and really trans helping transform that area worked on the last set of drugs I worked on at Vertex was in cystic fibrosis, which I think many in the audience knows that Vertex has really transformed lives there. Um, after I left Vertex, what the reason I joined Sanofi is that I, you know, my last part of my career, I wanted to be in um, Alzheimer's and dementia and related dementias like dementia with Lewy bodies and dementia 
think the time has finally come and I've come back into neurology. Um, I strongly believe now is the time. Um, after many years, all the learnings that in the last 10 to 15 years, and I look at from 12 years ago when I joined Sanofi and that was my entrance into dementia uh, drug development, just breathtaking pace of change, which has only accelerated within the last uh, two to three years. And that's as much seen in dementia with Lewy bodies, um, where you know, 10 years ago, all a black box. And today, I think this is a very apprehensible uh, disease. And again, we're leading the way and much some of the we're actually driving some of some of that understanding of, of what, what DLB is. And I think it's just a, it's a great time. And I've always been driven by um, impacting patients, but then also developing drugs and building companies around it. And I think we're greatly positioned um, to do that. And with it, um, I think we're going to deliver a lot of value to shareholders. Well, combining a few questions from our viewers and with your experience in this field, what makes ServoMed and DLB different from other CNS companies out there? So, um, so I'll answer the DLB part uh, first, and just say that it is this that if you're if you as we can do with the blood tests, identify the patients who are early enough. It's fundamentally not a neurodegenerative disease. You're capturing it before it becomes a neurodegenerative disease. And it's just much harder developing drugs in that context. If you go in early, it's like in multiple sclerosis, relapsing remitting MS versus progressive MS later on. It's night and day difference. We have you know, a dozen drugs now approved in relapsing remitting MS, one drug in the very early stages of progressive MS. And I think DLB is like that. I think once the, you know, it is just fundamentally more uh, treatable and apprehensible that um, you can develop disease modifying drugs into it. And then as a company, I would say it's three things. One is the extensive nature and the uh, of the and the strength of the scientific and clinical data, all published in major peer-reviewed journals. Um, I think singular in terms of the, the 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 extensive nature and the strength of the of the data that we've published. Two is as you mentioned is the the leadership team, um, deep the depth and breadth of experience both on the management team and the board of directors. I think. In our space, in particularly in the smaller cap uh, group, I think rather unique. And the two of and both things combine into what I would say is the, is the third point. And within this year, um, I think it is a rather unique investment thesis that we've set up in terms of value creation potential within the phase two B study, um, and with all the data. Um, I think we are positioned for success. The, the prob if you look at the pro objectively look at the probability of success given the data that we have, the risk return profile, and the ability to deliver this level of potential return within this year, within 2024, is unique. If you can elaborate more on that, how do you see the company and the drug progressing after phase 2B? I think we'll have lots of options. Um, as I mentioned, in terms of the size of the phase three trial, um, the dollars involved, the time involved, it's something that we could independently develop, um, raise money in the public marketplace, finance, and take it through to the market. At the same time, there will be opportunities either through partnerships and perhaps even acquisition um, to have this drug be developed by, by large pharmaceutical companies. This is a, a sweet spot for large pharma. They're, I think people know that they are looking for um, opportunities in the CNS piece. We have recent examples of major acquisitions, Carina Therapeutics, Cerevel, in this space. Um, with phase 2B data, there's an opportunity, and we will look at this 
as we often do, of what's in the best interests of drug, balancing drug, patients, um, and the medical need, and then to shareholders. And there are a number of ways to solve that. Um, with positive success here, uh, we, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have optionality. It'll be a good place to be. Uh, quickly, we just have a few minutes left, trying to combine some questions from our viewers. Talk a little bit about uh, DLB and its impact on patients, specifically their families and society around them. Yeah, it's again, um, th thank you for that question. It's a, it's a, it, it is an important one. Um, it, DLB is, as I said, has, it's not only a pure uh, cognitive disorder. Um, you can compensate for memory in certain ways. It's harder to compensate for attention and executive function defects, but it's also, it's harder to compensate for if on top of that, there's a motor effect uh, as well. Um, so it has tremendous impact in terms of quality of life. And there are, there are direct comparisons, particularly in, in mild dementia in the early stages, the quality of life is worse, healthcare costs is greater, caregiver burden is worse. The average time from uh, diagnosis through to uh, dependency, uh, being in, an, in, in a care home or in, in some setting that addresses uh, independence, like a nursing home, is on average, as a large study that showed this, is about two years with DLB um, versus um, which is about half or four, four years plus for, for, all, for, for Alzheimer's disease. Um, and, and it just, but at the same time, those symptoms are because of the part of the brain that's impacted and the mechanism of the disease is actually disproportionate to, to the amount of neuronal loss. So that's where, again, the drug development opportunity is that you can deliver more value, um, both because there's more impact and because the drug can work better this, um, because of, 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 of that equation. Um, and that's what makes DLB and, and our drug and what we've seen very specifically addresses the need. DLB is, it's not the long-term progression, it always matters, but it really is today, here and now, because of the impact on quality of life and caregiver burden, they need something that makes them better and has impact as they go on to treatment over the weeks and months after they start treatment and not just that further decline. And I think our drug and the data we've seen firmly addresses that, that, that need. Doctor, very important work you're doing. Great presentation. Thank you so much. We have some more questions for you, but we'll send them to you so you can answer them on your own time. But thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, again, and thank you to you for, for having us. And then thank you to everyone in the, in the audience for listening. And again, I hope um, you join us in our journey. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Please join us again in the near future for some updates. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye -bye. Stay with us. We'll be right back.